It's my pleasure to welcome you all to the regular meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council for Monday, May 9, 2011. I'd ask the clerk to take the roll. Town Council Chair Sherman. Here. Councilor Gubinelli. Here. Councilor Jordan. Here. Councilor Lennon. Here. Councilor Sullivan. Here. Councilor Swift Kayata and Councilor Walsh. Here. Uh, please join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, town Council reports and correspondence. Jessica. Yes, um, uh, Chairman Sherman, I have several, um, several items. Um, first of all, uh, we have a vacancy still for the Thomas Memorial Library Board of Trustees. We have a vacancy for the Planning Board. Application deadline for these uh, positions, uh, uh, the uh, deadline is this Friday, May 13th, so we hope that we will receive applications for these positions. Um, also, I'd like to announce uh, that on May 26, there is a public forum for the Open Space and Greenbelt Management Draft Plan. This plan is going to be presented. Uh, it's online already, I believe. Pardon? Parts of it. <laughs> anyway, it will soon all be online. But. Um, the uh, Open Space and Greenbelt Management Committee is presenting this to the Town Council formally in June, but we want very much to have public input, and that opportunity is uh, May 26 here in Chambers at 7 p.m. Just to let you know, if you don't already, or as a reminder, the town owns over 923 acres of open space, over 16 miles of Greenbelt trails. And the committee's been working very hard to come up with written management policies for all of this space. So we really hope that the public comes and um, offers their comments and ideas for us. Um, the other uh, item is on tonight's agenda, um, Chairman Sherman, 920, no, I'm sorry, 92-2011. I had, asked, I had asked last week that that be tabled till June, if, if that could be. I, I think perhaps when we reach that agenda item, we could, you could just make a motion to table at that point. Thank you. Okay. Any other town, uh, Jim? Just that the ordinance committee is working on the on the uh, growth areas in town, and the meeting is scheduled for uh, the 18th. Uh, we have our next ordinance committee meeting, and we have uh, hopefully we'll at that point wrap up our discussions and our evaluation of uh, the issues that surround the growth here in town with some recommendations to the town council meeting in June. And again, I'd encourage uh, citizens who are interested in that subject to, uh, to um, come to the meeting on the 18th. And uh, my hope is that we'll have something for the town council to deal with in June. Thank you. Sarah. I'd like to remind everyone that tomorrow's election day, um, two things are on the ballot. One is the Senate race for District 7 uh, to fill Larry Bliss's vacated spot. And the other is the school board referendum. So I would encourage everyone, every, everyone in town to vote. Uh, polls are open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, in the high school gym. Anyone else? I, I did just want to mention that the town lost two uh, dedicated volunteers in the last couple of weeks. Uh, Alan Rowe uh, recently passed away. He was a longtime community volunteer, uh, was captain of Fire Engine One Company, and a longtime volunteer firefighter. Also noteworthy is he's the father of uh, Jim Rowe, who served on the council, and Priscilla Rowe. So the uh, on behalf of the council, I send that family our condolences. Uh, we also lost Tom LaProd. Uh, Tom served on the Zoning Board of Appeals and was also its chair. Uh, he also served on the Thomas Memorial Board of Trustees and I think for over 14 years coached Little League Baseball. Um, and uh, again, we send the LaProd family our condolences. Uh, this is the first opportunity uh, this evening for uh, citizens to uh, comment on items that are not on tonight's agenda. If anybody would like to speak to an issue not on the agenda, please come forward to the podium, identify yourself, and uh, you feel free to offer your comments. 
Okay, seeing none, I'll ask the town manager for his report. Yes, thank you, David. I wanted to briefly update the council on the New England Cottontail at, at Fort Williams Park. Uh, we've been continuing to have uh, very cooperative discussions with the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. Uh, the, the department has agreed uh, that any mitigation requirements will be only going forward, not declaring that that has already been done. Uh, so that's a, a very positive uh, move, and we're, we're working now with uh, the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife to identify uh, a, a site that would be a habitat for them uh, to allow other plans to continue to go on at Fort Williams Park, as has been planned. So the, the state's been very cooperative, and we appreciate uh, uh, their assistance as we uh, resolve some of these issues. Right. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Deborah, before we turn this over to Matt Sturgis, did you have any other uh, information to offer regarding tomorrow's election? Uh, as Sarah said, the polls are open from 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. Everyone votes at the high school gymnasium. I would just like to take a minute to thank everyone for their help. No matter what the size of the election, um, it's quite an undertaking because of the absentee ballot process the way it is. I'd like to specifically thank Scott Berry and April Cohen Tracy for coming in to help us. Uh, our, town our deputy town clerk, Jackie Coy, and her husband actually are still working and we'll be for a while longer getting ready for tomorrow. So again, I would um, be remiss if I did not thank those folks for their help uh, as we approach tomorrow. So again, we'll be at the high school gymnasium, uh, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, the town manager had suggested, and I thought it was a good idea to invite uh, Matt Sturgis to tonight's meeting to give us an update on the reevaluation. <coughs> Greetings, council members. Nice to see you this evening. I'll try to be brief uh, and give you an update as to where we are. Obviously, uh, over the weekend, probably Friday and or Saturday, received notification from the town of an increase in the assessment value of your, of your house. Uh, in some cases, it was a large increase. In some cases, it wasn't so much of an increase. Uh, I'm here tonight to kind of report on the results of over a year's worth of effort to update the assessments for the town. First of all, uh, a little bit of background. The Cape Elizabeth assessment history, uh, and I brought the, the magic of PowerPoint with me tonight uh, to, hope, to help uh, convey my message, but the last in-house revaluation was performed in 2003. So it's been eight years since we have done an in-house update, and this is the most recent one for 2011. Both of them were performed in-house. It's important to stress at a much reduced cost as it would have been to have actually hired an outside firm. Uh, we had substantial savings and this project actually did come in and I, I forecast to come in significantly under budget from before. So it's a large undertaking and, and cost effective. The goals that we had at the outset of this project was primarily the equalization of the tax burden between properties and, different, and disparate property classes within the town. We also wanted to maintain compliance with state law and that was in concert with the equalization concept, as well as follow the directive of the main constitution, which states that all taxes upon real and personal property shall be apportioned and assessed equally according to the just value thereof. Ultimately, that, and the state has gone above and beyond that to establish minimum standards. Uh, the primary one here uh, ultimately is a minimum of 70% assessment ratio, but that is exactly the bare minimum. We were actually overall above that minimum amount, but our significant problem was equity between different neighborhoods ultimately in town and different classes of property, such as uh, waterfront versus some inland properties and differences between neighborhoods. Now, it's important to note that a revaluation does not raise new revenue for the town. Uh, that's one misconception that a lot of folks look at. They say, wow, look at that new number and they understand you know, two weeks ago or uh, three weeks ago the budget was passed and they look at the tax rate that was forecast and they get sticker shock but this is actually revenue neutral in many ways and what I, what I mean by that is with the assessed value of the town increasing the actual tax rate decreases and that's why you may have seen on your revaluation notice instead of the eighteen dollars and twenty eight cents that was forecast at the end of the budget process for the town side 
it actually brought forward a $15.18 estimated tax rate. So it dropped $3.10. I will say that uh, that was a conservative estimate, and I do foresee that that will actually be a bit lower than that, but I won't actually have a full actu actual number until the hearings and the revaluation reviews are, are completed and we go to commitment in, in August. So. Uh, but the purpose of a revaluation ultimately is to value all properties according to the same standard or trying to get them all at about the same level of assessed value in relationship to their market value. Now, uh, just value is defined in a sense by law as based on market value. It doesn't always mean market value because you, know, you do a revaluation one year and the next year the market could move up, it could move down. So just value is actually how that property sits in relationship to the other properties assessed assessed within the community. So you could be at, your just value could be, at, like this year, at 80% of market value. That is actually just value for the town. It's a little confusing, but uh, it's, it's one that kind of gets mixed up at times. And it's also important to note that price does not always equate to market value. Case in point would be if you bought a property or, uh, or a property at a discounted or a dis a distressed sale such as an auction whereas the sale price may be significantly less than what the value of that property is but it's still a price the value may be something considerably higher than that well, the, the converse of that of course is you could overpay or you might have paid for something at the peak of a market and the, the price at that point might be higher than what the value actually is today so we try to reconcile those two concepts of price and value a good example of this may be uh, looking at market value as the actual selling price when as long as you know, both parties involved, meaning the buyer and the seller, are both knowledgeable. So if they each know what they're, one knows what he's getting rid of and the other one knows or she may know what she's actually getting in exchange. One way to look at it is if you go to a car lot and you have six identical cars and they're all selling for about $20,000, or their sticker price is $20,000. Well, one sells for $19,000, one sells for $18,500, one sells for $17,700. What they may look at is the average selling price, and that kind of gives you what the, what the value may be is actually about the average of those. Um, at about $18,400 would be what you could expect to, to pay for a car of comparable property, of comparable quality, looking at those sales. So that's kind of a, kind of a, Good, you know, easy way to break it down. Uh, what we've seen recently in the past are since basically from the peak market, which I ultimately was I'd identify as 2007, was the market has actually pulled back some. I guess that's no surprise to, to most of us if you look at or look at the paper or, or watch the news or have refinanced your home. You've seen you know that there have been has been a reduction. Uh, I would say that overall, you know, since over the four years, the five-year study here, you know, 11% drop is about what I had seen. Looking at the numbers, that's kind of what has held, has held firm from 2007 to now. Versus in other sections of the country where you see on, you know, basically the headline news or some kind of large dramatic headline is that a market had collapsed. Think of South Florida, think of California, think of Providence, Rhode Island, think of, you know, whatever town USA may have been a boom or bust cycle. It hasn't quite exactly been the case that we found in Cape Elizabeth. Uh, it has declined, but not significantly in relationship to the horror stories that you've read elsewhere. So that's uh, important to note. And uh, also, looking at the change in assessments, a lot of folks can say, well, how can you do a revaluation during a down period in the market? It actually you know, still shows that we're approximately 22% below what full market value is when you look at the at the actual ratios of assessed values to sale properties. So we still, even with that change in the market, had found that there was a 22% difference between the overall average sales. So that is part of the part of the reason why we balance that out. Now, the effect of this revaluation is that you're going to find that taxpayers whose current value is 75% or less of market value. So say that if if the house sold for, say, $100,000, and it was, say, at $74,000 assessment, their property value tax, or their property taxes will show an increase. So if they're less than, or if they're more than 25% away from market value, their taxes will probably increase. 
if you have an assessment that's you know, closer to full. That